Here is another question from one of our viewers. They were having a difficult time figuring out how to build the guardrail along with the handrail for a situation like this where we have a landing along with an L-shaped stairway or a stairway coming up and turning 90 degrees and continuing up to the next floor. So the first thing I want to point out is that you need to find out what the minimum distance is for your guardrail height. The guardrail will be the wall or the section of the stairway that will prevent people from falling off the side of the stairway. And the handrail will be the part that people hold on to while walking up and down a stairway. And the building code reference book that I often refer to calls out for 42 inches or three foot six inches. And that's often measured from this line here. However, this area here can be a problem or a little confusing. And we can go ahead and build this section of the guardrail like this if we want to, because we're still going to be a little bit taller. This area right here is going to be taller than 42 inches. Remember, we can be taller, we just cannot be shorter. And as far as measuring the stairway, we can usually measure from the tip or the front of the nosing, front of the tread, whichever protrudes out the furthest, or you can measure along this line here. So with the stairs, you're not going to always be measuring from the top of the step. However, on the landing, you will be. You will be measuring from the top of the guardrail to the top of the landing. And these are finished measurements. If you build your handrail at exactly 42 inches, and then add three quarters of an inch of waterproofing material to the top of the stairs, the building inspector isn't going to be happy. So you can always build it a little bit taller, which is what we're doing here. We're kind of following the line here and coming up with our 42 inch measurement. If we measure from here, we're gonna have 43, 44 inches. So we're still going to be in pretty good shape. However, for our grippable handrail, if we were to bring it down and intersect over here, we're going to have a problem. So this is how I would do it. And I'm not about to suggest that you don't need to do something different at the top or the bottom of the grippable hand railing. We're not focusing on that in this video. I'm focusing on the landing and what might be required in your area, what your building codes might suggest. And the orange area here represents the maximum height of 38 inches. And the bottom line represents the minimum height of 34 inches. And our handrail needs to be within that area. And when we get over to here, we're going to have to run it straight up so that we can intersect it at the bottom and at the top and keep it within that measurement. So we're not going to go all the way down to the bottom here because we're dealing with the landing. Your measurements are going to come off of the top of the landing or the front of the stair step, or in this area here all the way up until we get up to here, and then it's gonna flatten back out. Our measurements are going to be from the top of the finished floor to the top of the guardrail, and of course, from the top of the finished floor to the measurements required for our grippable handrail. And hopefully that makes sense. So you can see here where we're coming right up the center here with our grippable handrail and you can come right up the center here with the guard railing, even though I would make this a little bit larger just in case. And let's take one last look at the area that's not going to work for the grippable handrail. However, it will work just fine for the guard railing. And hopefully that makes sense. However, if it does not, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the video comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.